But grace and peace to you on this day from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, this section from the Hebrews starts like this. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. The conviction. Think about that. When I think of that word, I think of uh, standing strong on your own, of uh, not wavering, of having everything kind of worked out so you know what's happening. Uh, I don't know about you, but I don't think faith really works like that. We um, have questions. We have doubts. We go through things and it leaves us uh, unsure about others. We uh, don't do it on our own. We ask people their thoughts. We experience things uh, for ourselves. Doubt is a big part of faith. We tend to make it the opposite of faith. We think either you believe fully, convicted, or you have doubts. But Jesus doesn't think so. He describes the opposite of faith as fear. Both are a reaction to doubt. Are you going to stand strong or are you going to cower in the face of fear? When you find fear in your life, do you uh, lock the door, turn the lights off, and hide under the covers so the boogeyman won't get you? Or do you leave the lights on? Do you gather those around you? Do you look out with the door unlocked waiting for the master to return? That's the story he tells. Uh, now that it's summer, actually quite near the end of the school year, we kind of got a little lax with our morning schedule, and we've slipped back into something that we like to do. So uh, the fallback position that we have in the morning when there's not anything else going on is to get up, have coffee, sit on the couch, and turn on the news. We love doing that. We've done that since uh, we got married. Now when you have the school year and things happening, you can't do that. You've got to leave the TV off and get the kids ready and sit and have breakfast together and talk about what's, what's coming. That makes more sense. But when you don't have to do that, it's the first thing we do the first day. Turn on the news, see what's happening different than what happened 10 hours ago when you just watched the news uh, to hear the latest on all of the tragedies that happened in the last week. Now something that's happened over the course of the summer is our youngest one, uh, Mia. She's just a bad sleeper to begin with. She has a hard time falling asleep. She's one of those people I think for her life always will be the person to come down at least twice. Uh, so she is that person to start with. But she has had like these, these fears, these terrors, just uh, deathly beside herself. Can't be settled, coming down uh, right after she's gone to bed. Not a snuggle. I want to see how long I can get away with it, but the, the ostrich head in the armpit kind of thing. And I'm sure there's lots of very reasons this could happen, but we kind of put two and two together, and it seems the variable that we implemented was watching the news in the morning. Now you know the news is not really the news. It's just that outlying of all of the different uh, tragedies that are around us. That's what they put on the television. That's why we have 24-hour news cycles and everything else, to keep that uh, horror going, to sell you on fear, to keep you afraid, to make you think you're all alone, to make you wonder when that tragedy is going to happen to you. And it makes us want to lock the door and turn the lights off and hide under the covers. Because it is a scary world and there's a lot of bad things in it. And if you think over the course of the summer, everything from fires to tornadoes to floods to unrest to civil wars to our own political strife to violence, it just goes on and on and on and on. And we can be deathly afraid. But faith, Hebrews says, is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. We're afraid because of the things we have seen. Faith is assurance in the things we have not. Uh, a few weeks ago when we were at uh, Luther Crest Bible Camp in Minnesota with our friends having family camp as we do each year, we like to take the kids on a boat. Uh, they have a variety of boats, but uh, the speed boat is the one that you can water ski on. 
So uh, usually what happens is my friend uh, Dave drives the boat, he pilots it, I'm the guy in the back with the kids on the boat. And since they're novices at skiing, it's the kind where the rope comes and it trips through the skis and through the, the rope that you hang on to. So rather than tie it off on the boat, because you would just be drenched forever and ever, uh, a person needs to hold on to the end of the rope and when they fall, you let go. And um, it's a lot of fun. I feel like I've been building up good trust with these kids over the course of several years doing this. And it only takes one time of not letting go in time to undo all of that. So the kids are all skiing around. They're all having a great time. You know, each one has had their turn. And it was time for Mia to go. She was talking about this uh, all day long. She can't wait to try to ski. And uh, all of a sudden, she did not want to go. Didn't even want to get in the boat. I know she thought it was going too fast. I knew th she thought she couldn't uh, keep up with the other kids who seemed to be experts right away. There must have been some other things going on. But she just didn't want to go. And we said that was fine. But the next day was her birthday. And we had planned a whole day on the boat, on a different boat, a bigger boat, so everybody could be together. And on that boat, we had an uh, inner tube, you know, the one where you bounce around on the waves. Fun, low risk, you know, you just kind of hang on in there. Uh, again, all the, it took us a while just to get me in the boat. She didn't want to go in the boat, and the only place she would be is on my lap, kind of snuggled in ostrich style. You know, what a great way to spend your birthday, right? So we're uh, in the boat, and all the kids are having fun. And Mia, do you want to go? No, I don't want to go. On and on. So we got in the middle of the lake, we took a break, and a couple of the girls says, we want to jump in and swim. Mia, do you want to come? And she said, so the three girls jumped into the water with their life vest, swam around for a while, pulled them out, got them back in the boat. Other kids uh, were in the tube for a while. And then we crossed this uh, little bridge from one lake to another. You had to kind of like idle through. And we asked Mia, do you want to go in the tube? She said, yes, if I can only go that slow. If I can go that fast, then maybe I'll do it. Now you would think, kids being kids, you would make fun of her a little bit or, or give her a hard time for not going fast. But everyone in the boat was cheering her on. If we were going any slower, we would have been going backwards. But there she was in the tube, thumbs up. Faith is the assurance of things longed for. Sometimes when we don't have it for ourselves, we have a community of people around us to give us assurance. To root us on. We have this great phrase in the Protestant tradition that we stand by faith alone. Well, faith doesn't happen alone. It happens in relationship to other people, in a community. I looked up that word conviction. It doesn't just mean having it all together like we think. It actually means having a solid place to stand. Think of that. Think of... Uh, those moments where you feel like you're just sinking. Or you feel like you might fall out of the boat and get left behind. Or all the other things you think about because you're afraid. But faith is that place, that solid place where you can actually find footing. Maybe if you're just even idling through. But there it is. And the thing that we stand in that is solid is Jesus Christ. And I want to say the things that he talks about all of these stories he tells, and he tells so many of them. I mean, they do challenge us. They do kind of like make us think about our own assumptions about things. They do position us in a different way to, to see the world. But I also think what he's doing behind all of these stories, and even in this one, especially in this one, is to give us some assurance. And to think about these disciples who had been with him in the darkest moment. You know, when he was betrayed when they abandoned him, when he died, when they were afraid, when they were locked behind the doors. And yet there, the risen Christ stood with them. And they remembered these stories. And they told them. And they wrote them down. And we still share in them. So that in our times of doubt and uncertainty and questions, when we are afraid, when we see the world all around us falling apart, when we think all we're going to do is sink, when we want to lock the door, 
when we want to hide under the covers and hope everybody just goes away. It's there. That that same risen Christ meets us. Now it was a few days later, this was a week later. Different set of kids. Joe and I were back in Connecticut. Uh, and Tammy was with some of her friends, their children, on a different lake. And some of those girls wanted to go skiing and they asked Mia along. And she said yes. And when you know it, she got in the water. She put the skis on in the water. She gave the thumbs up for a little bit. This happens. Not because we always have a solid place to stand. Not because we understand and the physics that if you've got enough mass and enough speed and enough surface area and some stability you can stand up on your own. It comes up because of the assurance that we're given from others by the place to stand where Christ is who meets us. Where we can look at this world, the water all around us, the people who have gotten us to this point the water's great. Amen.